So I'm going to talk about how you make your own data flow in a few hundred lines in more than one way. And uh, this is basically joint work for various people associated with Project Fluid. Uh, so it's all open source experiments and I tend to go by Mishka, so that's... And I'm going to start with a demo just to sh short demo just to show a flavor of it. Uh, so that's so we call it fluid for a number of reasons, but as you see. So what's going on here is uh, you start with a uh, with the image like this and uh, you then run it through a wave transform, then you do color inversion and second wave transform, and you have a couple of linear combinations like this and uh, like this. Uh, so I'm going to return to, so data flow is, you have a graph and uh, data typically streams of data go by e through edges of the graph and gets processed in the nodes. And I'll return to this uh, in a bit. Uh, but first, uh, when we got both artistic and uh, research needs to work with this architecture, we thought about can we use uh, standard data flow? Uh, and there are tons of them. For example, people love touch designer, which is proprietary, and people are very happy about it. But it's closed source, we we're not sure what we want to do. We didn't know whether we can hack it, probably not. Then there is glorious pure data. Pure data is a rewrite of open source rewrite of Max MSP by its author. And uh, this textbook is all written around pure data. And it's open source. And and that's its source tree, and it's all good, but this source tree has 70,000 lines of code. Maybe for some of you, it's okay. I am not able to, to like master 70,000 lines of code. So like, um, so what we did, we just turned to processing, and we'll, we wrote, uh, implemented several architectures all in processing, and we uh, did over the course of last year experiments, and each of them is a few hundred lines. And each of them is a few hundred lines of vanilla object-oriented code with no frills. In one case, like, well, hash tables and dictionaries. Uh, so one takeaway is that you can do it. Uh, if you want to do an experiment and in data flow and fully control it, it's easier. And um, audio and vi audio streams and visual streams are, of course, a natural case for data flow. But also, neural networks are all data flow if you think about them. And uh, signals go around connections between neural cells and get processed there. And so, this is also a natural case. So now let me return to this, uh, talk about, talk a little bit more about uh, these few architectures. Uh, so one, uh, so this particular architecture is based on a bipartite graph. Uh, uh, nodes are associated with data, with rectangles, and nodes are associated with transforms, in this case. Uh, wave transforms and negation transforms and linear combination. And there are controllers attached to data, uh, to, to mostly to transforms. Uh, so this is click controller. It allows you to restart the wave and you can abuse it like this. And this is also has click controller and you can abuse it like this. And this has a controller controlling linear combination. So here is linear combination of the of the stable image and the, and the wave. And this is a linear combination of uh, two waves. Uh, 
so this is the first architecture I wanted to show. Uh, the second one, we wanted to explore uh, we wanted to explore changing a program while it runs. And uh, we added some reflection facilities. This is the data, a data flow program, and this, uh, this square refers to uh, this part of the image. This refers to here. So, and this is a very different architecture. It's co completely right, and it's probably the most complex of it. It's almost 1,000 lines, but not quite. And one key thing we were doing is we were taking, uh, we were taking uh, a node and learning to splice a linear flow from the side and the gradually. And I'm going to show it to you in action, a demo of it uh, a few times so that uh, we'll see uh, how it works. So it is this one. Let me run it. Yes. So note this. Note that this is uh, this thing with at. It is a reference to the program itself. Now I'm going to show you this run again, but I'm going to change the code. I'm going to raise this thing up. And you'll see how, how the position of this ad will change inside the box. So note that where it is here. Uh, now I'm going to say, say, so see, now it's on the, in the top of the small box. So, it, so they show the, so this is fairly, uh, has this reflection facilities. Not only you see a program inside one of these images, but uh, you see correctly where it is positionally located within the overall design. So uh, let's do it once again. It's probably so. Yeah. And th there are these controllers. You can actually change this linear combination by, and you can do this. So it's more or less the same thing. Uh, and uh, it's not only the code, but uh, here there are some preprints and. Uh, And uh, this preprint describes these two architectures. So it serves is, if you want to play with these particular architectures, with this preprint, you, uh, this preprint will serve you as a detailed documentation of how it is working inside. Uh, now, what turns out we should do with this weird thing is that that we should eliminate this by adopting a discipline where linear transformations are always connected into nonlinear and back, by adopting a different discipline of bipartite graph. And then you get something very similar to neural networks, where you have incoming synapses, and then you have the body of the neuron, in, and they form this bipartite graph. And then it turns out that you can, uh, that you can control that you can express a program as a matrix. And it's convenient to think about it as infinite matrix, but with only finite part of it active. So you think about countable size matrix with all zeros except for finite number of elements. And, uh, and this is, uh, and if you use flows of real numbers, this will be a neural net. And uh, we'll, we used uh, this neural net uh, to implement some continuous cellular automata. So I'm going to show you a few of those uh, continuous cellular automatas. Um, so the neurons here are interesting. The neurons here are almost always work as identity transformers. They just pass data through. But occasionally, 
Occasionally what they do is they put zero instead. So they're slightly imperfect propagators with light randomization. That turns out to be enough to produce all kind of Turing, emerging Turing structures. And you have country, you can resume, you can stop. Uh, and if you do different connectivity, then you can, uh, this is default configuration, but then you can uh, take this configuration, this configuration and uh, and there will be some some structure emerging, but maybe not with this brightness of projector. But yeah, I'm seeing it better on my screen than than on that one. So let me try another one that probably will be better visible. Uh-huh, uh this one. Maybe I can increase, uh, maybe I can do it. What if I try to amplify it actually? Oh, I'm using the wrong, the wrong mouse. What if I do it this way? So these were our original experiments, and uh, then we started to pay uh, more. Uh, and about this, I probably want to, the previous ones are just all vanilla object-oriented uh, thing, but uh, this one has a couple of hash tables, because you have sparse matrix, uh, you, have the, uh, you have the hash map, of matrix elements, and you also have hash maps of every row. And what I found useful for matrices is to not to use numbers as indexes, use words. Words are just numbers. Just think about letters as digits. But this way you can uh, give semantically meaningful words, and it's nice this way. Uh, so th that's one trick we found here useful. And then we started to think more about uh, how it is uh, how it is really generalizes neural nets. Uh, so let me talk a bit about this, and then I'll show you the last demo which I committed today to this project. So that's uh, yeah. I want to th I want to actually thank people who run at party. I attend. This is my third year, and it's a source of constant inspiration and and uh, for me and uh, in particular and today's occasion to talk was inspiration for me at least i implemented some next delta and committed it and i wouldn't have done so otherwise so that's that's a lot actually so yeah i'm going to uh, get notes of this talk and post them on this website so that's the only URL you really need to know from today's talk is this one. I'm going to uh, post the notes. Uh, 
So neural networks, I highly recommend this post. This is the best post, the best material on neural networks is this post by Andrei Karpati called Unreasonable Effectiveness of Recurrent Neural Networks, which is a pun on uh, famous uh, paper by Wigner, Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. And here he explains first how to teach uh, it to reproduce Shakespeare and do this and that. And at some point he started to, starts to uh, take a body of mathematical texts and produce uh, this kind of, uh, this is complete nonsense, but very convincingly looking. Nice lady compiles, um, you know, looks like. And then he does the same to Linux kernel. That's, th that should horrify you even more. Uh, yeah, that's your Linux kernel. Total nonsense. Looks very good. Yeah, so, the, so that's what he... Oops, where did I go? Yeah. Yeah, like this. It's all good. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we still have to put the actual semantic learning in addition to learning the superficial shape, but the uh, style it has. <laughs> so, the, uh, and I learned tons of things. For example, uh, how can you uh, represent discrete structures in all this? How do you represent letters? You represent letters as follows. Take the alphabet, give one dimensional of vector space for each letter of the alphabet. So have vectors with as many coordinates as you have letters of alphabet. And letter is one in the appropriate place and the rest is zero. And there is room for your fuzzy letters and for distributions and that's how it works. You also can, uh, uh, you also can consider probability distributions and like do flows of samples. And so this way you can over anything, and this way you can embed any discrete structures into this architecture. Uh, so we, so we did write a couple of preprints, specifically uh, thinking about data flow matrix machines as a generalization of recurrent neural nets. The problem with recurrent neural nets is that uh, they are really esoteric programming language, like you know, uh, like. Uh, glorious language is brain fuck, and like, and like the great language Piet, where you write pro where a program looks like this. But unfortunately, interpretation is very discontinuous. Yeah, so you can have a comp around it. Uh, program something manually in neural net. It's a nightmare. Uh, we think that uh, the generalization we have here is completely different in this sense. You can uh, program normally there while while keeping the learnability of neural nets. That's why I think it is interest. Another term which is, uh, peop which is related to this is Turing Tarpit. I think it's a great term. Uh, that's like classical neural nets, unfortunately, are they are Turing complete, but, mm, but you can't really program on them. While in this stuff you can. Uh, in particular, there was the guy who invented everything which was worth inventing in neural nets, uh, Jorgen Schmidt-Huber, uh, wrote this paper about neural net editing its own connectivity matrix. And the encoding is such that it's only five pages. N nice little paper, but uh, when you, after you read it, you'll realize that it's not usable for anything because it's very fragile. Small changes will like destroy it. Uh, while in reality what you do is you, instead of uh, doing it this way, you consider streams of matrices. Matrices are vectors, even if they are potentially infinite, but with, and so you can consider streams of them, and you can, uh, uh, and you can uh, basically make, using that metaphor, you can make network to modify itself. None of this is implemented, it's only written up as a, as a last preprint in this list. Uh, uh, so that was basically what I wanted. Now I can answer questions, I can go over. Ah, no, it's not all. I, 
so I was inspired to commit uh, this new version. Uh, it does a couple of things. F first of all, we use the different type of neurons here. We use trigonometric neurons, which use trigonometric functions to do this transformation, to do instead of random propagators. So the, pattern are, the patterns are And we also used, and we also use uh, so-called multiplicative masks. So let me show you what this is. Basically, you add, you add the second argument to a neuron. People reinvent it. it uh, once in a while, this appears, but you won't read it in a standard uh, textbook or in a standard material on neural nets. It helps to allow neurons to accumulate more than one linear combination. And then you can use it in particular in multiplicative way. Here, uh, our randomized propagator, uh, or here we take sinus and multiply it by the value of multiplicative mask. And here uh, we use uh, the mask to adjust to adjust the result of our randomized propagator. So what, uh, why do you want it? Uh, you can uh, say you want to redirect your flow of data in the network this way or that way. The easiest way to do it is to impose a multiplicative mask and to turn the thing you don't want to work at the moment by multiplying them by zero. Or say you want layers, like in deep networks. It's very easy to program layers by matrix connectivity. But all, what if you don't want them to work all at once? What if you want first layer to work first and second then? And so use mask to orchestrate the order. So these masks are very useful. And here we are using these masks for something very simple. We are We take, uh, we take the neuron white, which produces signal one, and we use the mask to, and we use it to control the masks in our neurons. So here we do the same thing, but back to, but back to randomized propagator. Then you have from initial picture you have this dynamics, or you go back to the sine wave and sprinkle a little bit of randomized propagator here. Or you sprinkle a little bit more. So you'll see, I'll, I'll show you a couple more just so you can appreciate diversity of. See how different, you have t tons of different effects. Uh, <laughs> or, that I want to show the other one. And then the last thing probably I want to show with this program is, uh, so I, I, let me return to pure, pure sign transform, uh, but then I'm going to do Instead of doing this, I'm going to introduce it more gradually. And then, and the way I'll do this is, I'm going to this control here, and I'm going to do a smooth kick in instead of the hard one. So 
I can do it even try to do it even. But uh, you lost some structures. The structure is a little bit more trivial. I can do it even more slowly. I didn't try that, but let's see. 